Let's pull this over here, and then we'll have it ready for when we need it. And this is 2023, 2018. Okay. All right. So we are all set up now for 2018. We just went through a whole mess of changes to get the 2018 uh, set up going. We have uh, bacon running, which will automatically run the latest day in 2018, which we're just starting with day one. And now let's look at 2018, Advent of Code, 2018, day one. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I haven't done anything yet. Okay, let's go. Day one, chronal, chronal calibration. Now, now, usually the day one stuff is very easy. Um, so I'm not anticipating this is going to take too long to get through day one. And so I'm guessing I'll be able to do day two as well. We'll find out. All right, we've detected some temporal anomalies. 500 year intervals in the past, someone's been changing Santa's history. Okay. Changes won't propagate a time stream for 25 days, right. So we're gonna collect stars like we do. Oh, I see. So we're gonna go 500 years further into the past every few days. All right. There's 50 anomalies. We've got to collect all 50 star. Every puzzle gives one star. Okay, this is the standard stuff. Um, device must be calibrated before first use. Frequency drift detected. Cannot maintain destination lock. All right, oh, okay, I guess we're going into the past, right? Yeah, she taps a button on the device and you suddenly feel like you're falling. Okay, so what do we need to do for problem one? Device shows a sequence of changes in frequency. A value like plus six means the current frequency increases by six, and a value like minus three means the current frequency decreases by six. Starting with a frequency of zero, what's the resulting frequency of all the changes in frequency have been applied? Ah. All right. So uh, I have a script which is supposed to work. Uh, it's in my bin. Do I have it in my path? Which, okay, it's called get input. Get input, not found. Okay, so path equals path home bin. And I'll add that to my profile so that I don't have to do that each time. And now if I say which get input, there it is. Get input 2018 day one. All right, so... 998 lines long. That's what this is telling me. Here's the first few lines of that file. So we can just see it's a bunch of numbers. Um, what is it? What does the end of the file look like? Do tail dash 20. So okay, so it's just it just continues the bunch of numbers. All right, Daddy, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Um, there is a big number at the end, but that shouldn't affect us, right? Because we're just parsing numbers. The only thing that's going to be tricky here is the plus. I don't think Rust's parser will handle the plus sign. It'll handle the minus sign. I don't think it'll handle the plus sign. All right. Well, let's get into it. Um, 2018.01. All right. Oh, and I've forgotten, okay, how, how to read files because I have a little file reader thingy. Uh, sorry, it's 2017.01. And just copy that. It's called oh, read single line. That's not what I want. <laughs> Let's try twenty seventeen oh two. And that just that can oh, this does numbers. Oh, nice. Maybe this will handle the negative sign. Let's see. If it doesn't, we can always extend that, right? Yeah. I don't think I don't think pars u will work with plus signs. We can try it and see what happens. Um, so in pars, let's make this a vec of, uh, let's call them just to be safe, a vec of I nums, a vec of I 64, right? That way we get pluses and minuses and I don't think we'll overflow. Um, in pars, then we can say, uh, what does this return? This returns a vec of 
a vec of you. Oh, I see. I see. What it's doing is for each line, it, there might be multiple numbers per line. All right. Well, let's, let's just write our own then. I mean, it's, it's not hard. <clears throat> we don't need to use every little utility I made. <clears throat> All right. So read lines. Yes, this just reads a string and it filters out blank lines. That's all this does. So let's do that. Let's let lines is equal to, um, let's go back here. It's just AOC lib read lines. And we give it the file name and put 2018.01.txt. That should build. It does build. Um, what we can do is just to show that we've read the lines. We're 998, remember? So we can just say lines, oh, we can say uh, self lines, a uh, nums. And we can just say uh, self nums len. Um, if expected vec i60, oh, right. So we have to actually map. Can I do this? Map from i64, no, from string, oh, into, maybe into, can I do that? Into, into, collect. Like that? No. Oh, oh, this is a vec. Okay, so I have to say into iter. This doesn't, the read lines doesn't return an iterator, it returns a vector. All right. The trait bound i64 from string is not satisfied. Okay, so I do need to parse. I'm guessing like this s.parse i64. Now what? Oh. Um, <laughs> unwrap. And this, this, I think this is where it's going to fail because the plus sign, oh no, it worked. It parsed them all. 998. Let's print out the first few and see if it matches. I thought the plus sign would throw it. Um, uh, four in zero dot dot 20. Printlin. Uh, self nums of i. Right? Yeah, and then we can take a look at the input. Um, input 2018.01.txt, right? Okay, so negative 14, negative 9, 14, 12, plus 13. Yeah, okay, so it all worked. Okay, so problem one is simply add them all up, right? So let's do that. Um, so we should just say self num sum, and that gives us a number, uh, it or sum. <laughs> Can't infer the type parameter, uh, I64. There we go, it's 561. There we go, okay, problem, problem one, sorry, day one, part one solved. Let's commit these changes. Git commit dash am 2018 day one part. Oh, I should use whatever uh yeah, okay. So that's that's the the syntax I'm using or the uh, description I'm using. Git commit dash am 2018 day one part one. All right, let's see what part two brings us. It should be equally easy, I believe. You notice the device repeats the same frequency change list over and over. To calibrate the device, you need to find the first frequency it reaches twice. For example, using the same list of changes above, blah, 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 blah. In this example, the first frequency reached twice is two. Oh, okay. Note that your device might need to repeat its list of frequency changes many times before a duplicate frequency is found, and that duplicates might be found while in the middle of processing the list. 
Okay. Um, so the obvious thing that I would do, I always reach for hashing whenever I have these things. Um, but it should be fairly straightforward. We just need to loop over the list and keep looping over it until we reach a duplicate frequency. So we could just say loop. Um, we'll create a hash. We'll call it freak. Let's hash set new. And we'll imp have to import that. And then we can just say for delta in self self nums. I think I have to put the oh let's try it without it because I think that doesn't I think this won't work the second time through the loop. I think this consumes it, but let's find out. Um, I always put the ampersand there just out of habit, so I just want to make sure I'm doing it correctly. All right, um, and then we just need to uh, keep track of this needs to be mutable. We have the current frequency starts at zero. We're going to add freak dot no cur freak plus equals delta. And then we're going to say if uh, we want to do an insert, right? Freak dot insert cur freak. The insert returns true if um, there was no entry in the hash set, and it returns false if there was already an entry in the hash set. So that means we found the first duplicate. And so once we find the first duplicate, we return. And we're going to return that frequency, right? The first frequency your device reaches twice. Curve freak. I think that's all we need to do, right? We just keep adding adding it up into, and inserting it until we get it. And then once we get it, we're done. Uh, I'm going to quit out of bacon because if this is this could potentially be an infinite loop if there's a bug. Tommy K says, when having the copy trait, this will be run every iteration for the current element. Um, I'm trying to understand. The, 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 I think the question is on this, whether I need to do a reference to the nums or if this will consume the nums. I haven't saved it yet, but I'm about to. <laughs> um, and I was hoping, yes, the copy trait would copy it into delta so I wouldn't have to, the, the, so the ampersand wouldn't be necessary. But we'll, let's find out right now. GNU Step says, Rust is an interesting language. It, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun with Rust. I've been doing it for a few years. Yeah, so this is what it's saying here. It's moved. Self numbers is moved if you do it this way. So you have to take a reference to it, which means that delta becomes a reference to an I64, which means we can't just simply add it here. We have to deref it here. So that, that's all I wanted to reinforce in my brain was that you actually need to do that in order to get it to work. So cargo run. All right, so that ran pretty quickly. 563 was the first frequency it found twice. Let's see if that's right. Ta-da! That is the right answer. McNett says, hello. Uh, DV says, are you also using it professionally or just for hobby? I only, I you know, for, 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 for work, I use Python and C. Those are the two languages. Not even C++, just regular, plain, old, ordinary C... I think it's C11 is the latest version we're using, which is, what, 12 years old now? So I want to use Rust. I can't use it at work, so I figured, well, let me learn it and stream it at the same time, and that way everybody can make fun of how bad I am at Rust and everybody feels better about themselves, right? Anyway, so that this is the answer for part two. Tommy says, you're doing great, though. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, git commit dash am 2018 day one part two. Yeah, and as suspected, day one didn't take very long. So let's do day two.